Hi, John LaRue here from the Beerbrook Art Gallery and behind me you can see the facade of the gallery that faces down river and also the green public park here in Fredericton and it's it's fairly austere but you can see it has that large black opaque window and during the day it's black and you can't see through it but at night when the gallery is lit up from inside you can see directly through straight on to our masterwork by Salvador Dali, his 1957 work, Santiago El Grande. And it's the work that the gallery is most known for. It's really our iconic painting. And what's really incredible about this vista from the green looking right through, you can actually see it from about half a kilometer away on the walking trail and the bridge. And what's really great is when you're actually inside the space, you can see not only Santiago El Grande, but four other Dali paintings that are permanently up in our space and I want to tell you about those today. If you're lucky enough to visit the Beaverbrook Art Gallery when our docent or security guard Jerry Rhymes is giving a tour of the Santiago El Grande by all means take it in. It's going to be one of the finest 15 minutes of your life. It's absolutely riveting and inspiring and plus it ends with you actively being encouraged to lie down on the floor directly under the painting with your feet against the wall looking up as Jerry will tell you uh, why the painting was actually meant to be seen high up on the wall and it's it's a tremendous work and it's our iconic work it has been so ever since the gallery opened in 1959 and at that time that painting was brand new it was painted in 1957 by Salvador Dali and it was the centerpiece of the Spanish pavilion at the 1958 World's Fair in Brussels and here you can see the funky architecture of the interior of the pavilion it would have been quite an experience seeing it then after the fair was done, the painting was purchased by Lady Dunn, who was the wife of the late Sir James Dunn, who was a very good friend of Lord Beaverbrook's and a uh, renowned New Brunswicker, and we'll get to that in a second. But the Dunns were good friends of Salvador Dali's. And the painting came to the gallery, and immediately when it opened in 1959, was just simply the talk of the town. But Dali was one of the great characters in 20th century art. He was eccentric. Uh, he's really well known for his, his uh, absolutely insane, you could almost say surreal mustache, which he, he waxed religiously. But he's most known for being a real pioneer of surrealist art, which was based uh, on dreams, on the subconscious, and it was an extremely uh, evocative art. Uh, that was inspirational to so many of the modern artists of the early to mid 20th century. And here's one of his well-known works, done. it's called The Persistence of Memory, done in 1931, which is now in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And a lot of people think this is a large painting. It's actually tiny. It only measures, you know, about the size of a, of a regular sheet of loose leaf on the wall. What is really surprising about Persistence of Memory is there's some aspects, certainly if you look to the beautifully rendered background and the cliffs and the water and the sky, that, that are actually reflected in Santiago El Grande. The painting depicts St. James, who's the patron saint of Spain. And St. James in Spanish is Santiago, uh, Santiago El Grande, St. James the Great. And he was one of the, uh, the 12 apostles of Christ. And he's shown here in the painting rising from the sea on an enormous white stallion, brandishing an outstretched crucified Christ in his, his outstretched arm with rays emitting from it. And you can see his, his foot is also stretched out of front, which is a metaphor for the, the Camino de Compostela, which is a huge pilgrimage, one of the most well-known in the world that thousands of people take part in every year. Probably people you know have taken part in the Camino. And surrounding them is this huge Gothic rib structure, as you can picture in a Gothic cathedral, with scallop shells arising from the sea. And scallop shells are the symbol of St. James. of Coquille. In French, it's Saint-Jacques, so you know Coquille Saint-Jacques. That's where the name comes from, the symbol of St. James. Dali saw it as this enormous, almost atomic explosion arising from the sea through the horse up to the heavens with angels above. And you can see down in the bottom, the lower right, there's a cloaked figure. And that's actually Dali's wife, Gala, uh, who was his muse. And he actually never signed this painting. He always said that his signature was, was Gala in the bottom corner. Now, from this, the reason that the painting is in the Beaverbrook is, as I said, it was purchased by Sir James Dunn's wife, Lady Dunn, who would later go on to marry Lord Beaverbrook. But Dunn, who died in the mid-1950s, was a good friend of Salvador Dali's, and Dali did a painting of him, Sir James Dunn, in 1949, and it's called La Tourbie. 
The story goes that James Dunn he first met Dali in 1947 at a restaurant called the Pavillon in New York, where the artist saw Dunn across the room and he ran over to him and he exclaimed, I'm a believer in reincarnation and I'm sure you're descended from the great Julius Caesar. And you can imagine what a businessman would think of that. And anyway, after the kind of bizarre introduction, the two started discussing, they shared admiration for old masters, the artists, and, and a passion for world history. And by the end of the conversation, Dunn had agreed to pose for the portrait, which became the portrait of Sir James Dunn called La Tule B. And so in the portrait, uh, Dunn seated with uh, his legs crossed and his bare feet draped in a pretty, <laughs> pretty crazy gold satin toga to kind of underscores his resemblance to Caesar, but also you can imagine there's a certain amount of just of, of ego and, and wealth expressed in that as well. The technical skill of the Dunn painting is, uh, is astounding to see when you get up close to the face, you could just see this, this almost photographic, this very seamless technique. Dali was just a, a master technician and he painted these paintings extremely quickly as well. When you look at his career, it's, it's, it's just astounding to know how fast he actually rattled these things off. But when you look at the details of La Tule B, you can see a lot of sort of symbolic uh, pieces and again, relating to the whole Roman aspect the, with Caesar, the, the classical uh, sculpted relief figures that are in the stone throne. Uh, there's also this, this nod to a surrealist period with this sort of single marching ant that's walking down along uh, at, the, at the base of the throne as well beautiful rendering of the, of the foot and the, the classical ruins just at the at the side of the Mediterranean, which is sort of tucked away uh, just in the, in the kind of background of the painting. And what's interesting is to see how Dali signed it as well. He used this Renaissance device of signing on an object within the painting. So his, his name is sculpted in one of the rocks down at the base of, of it as well. So the Beanbrook also has a second portrait of Sir James Dunn as well. And it was done after he died. So it was a posthumous portrait. And Lady Dunn commissioned this from Dali in 1958. Dunn had died two years before in 56. So this second portrait uh, is called Sunrise, Sir James Dunn from 58. And it presents Sir James Dunn with folded arms and he's standing against a, an interesting cloud-filled sky. And it's a lot more conservative when you compare it to La Tour B, but apparently it was still one of Lady Dunn's favorite portraits of her husband. And if you think it's interesting that we have two portraits of the same person, of Sir James Dunn, we actually have many more. We have probably half a dozen of them in the collection of the gallery. We have a well-known one by Sickert, uh, and we have a few more conservative ones of Sir James Dunn as well. So we have, we have our fair share of Sir James Dunn portraits. Uh, another interesting work in our collection in the, in the Dali Shrine, uh, to complete the, the Dunn family collection is the portrait of Lady Dunn, which was commissioned in 1954 and is called Equestrian Fantasy. Really interesting painting and it was inspired by Lady Dunn's passion for horses, which you can tell from the subject of the work, where they're sitting astride a horse. And Dali presents her, she's sitting side saddle on a, a large palomino horse. The horse is actually looking right at us and you can see that Lady Dunn's is a falcon perched on her gloved arm. And there's other animals in the background and down in the grass. There's a squirrel, two deer, a rabbit, a frog, a salamander. Uh, it creates this sort of almost fairy tale atmosphere that counterbalances this, this really regal sense of Lady Dunn atop the horse. And it, it may not seem quite as surreal, but, but there is a real surrealist nod. It's subtle at first, but when you notice it, you can't get past it. Dali gave Lady Dunn three legs. And if you look under, uh, you know, below the screen, you can see the, the projection of, of three, three legs coming out through there. And uh, the horse also has two tails. So always a consummate surrealist. Fascinating about uh, these portraits. All of them hung for many years in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, in the Dunn's house called Dayspring, which is still there near Katie's Cove, uh, down in the St. Andrews Peninsula, beautiful home. And it was later also the home of Lord Beaverbrook as well. And uh, it's great to know that St. Andrews had a whole bunch of Salvador Dali singing it, probably unbeknownst to a lot of the people in the town. Uh, one of the last works that's in the Beaverbrook Dali Shrine, and again has a St. Andrews connection as well, is this fascinating story, this strange little uh, piece that appeared that, that for years no one knew about. When Lady Dunn died, uh, in the mid nineties, they had an auction in St. Andrews of basically all of her stuff from Dayspring. And you could buy, you know, some expensive things, silverware, you could buy her toaster, you know, just mundane things, wrenches, whatever. 
um, as the auction house was going through all of the pieces, they cataloged them, and it was all said, a lot of people were coming from across the country. Only several days before the auction, and the listing was all set by then, remember, they found underneath this large photograph of Sir James Dunn, which hung, um, it was kind of a random photo, uh, they found this small watercolor tucked behind it uh, of an angel, and it's of a guardian angel. And it was signed by Dali, done in 1954, and it says Pull Sir and James Dunn, homage from Dali and Gala, so from Dali and his wife. And we figured it was probably this guardian angel tucked around. We don't even know if the Dunns knew about it or if Dali tucked it behind the work when he was a guest there. Who knows? But it appeared just days before the auction unannounced, and, um, and it caused a sensation of this sort of hidden, unknown Dali guardian angel work. And this one is almost the most surrealist of, of all the works that the Beaverbrook now has. So there you have it. Um, another interesting piece we have in our archives is a letter from Dali to Beaverbrook, where a lot of people don't know this, but Beaverbrook wanted to give Dali an honorary doctorate degree from the University of New Brunswick. So you can imagine Dali could have been a UNB alumnus. Dali in the letter says he couldn't uh, accept because he couldn't attend at the time because he was finishing painting one of his, his most well-known works of Columbus discovering America, which was painted around the same time uh, as uh, as the Santiago El Grande. And, but we have that letter, so you imagine the, what could have been. You imagine uh, the photograph of, of Dali on the stage with Colin B. Mackay getting a degree in the 1950s. So there you have the story of four fantastic works uh, by Dali, four, four portraits done that are in addition to the Santiago El Grande. So it makes really the Beaverbrook one of the one of the great destinations for Dali lovers around the world. So we look forward to having you at the gallery and take these in when we reopen, which hopefully will be soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.